June 20th, monthly meeting of the Henrico County Public School Board. Members of the board, you've seen the agenda and had an opportunity to review it. Is there a motion to adopt the agenda as presented? So moved. Been moved by Reverend Cooper. Is there a second? Second. Second by Mrs. Ogburn. All those in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? The agenda is approved. Madam Superintendent. All right, thank you, Mr. Chairman. And to begin our meeting, we will start with the Pledge of Allegiance, which will be followed by a moment of silence, which can be used by those in attendance for meditation or prayer. If you would, please stand and join me for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. And if you would please pause for a moment of silence. Thank you, you may be seated and um, we will be joining you momentarily for our recognition. Good evening, Mr. Chairman, uh, Dr. Cashwell, members of the board, and guests. Uh, my name is Thomas Farrell, and I have the privilege of serving as Director of High School Education. Uh, 39 students in grades 9 through 11 from Highland Springs High School earned the highest combined scores this year on the evidence-based reading and writing and mathematics portion of the preliminary apt excuse me, scholastic aptitude test, also known as a PSAT. All 39 students were invited to be with us this evening, but unfortunately only one student can make it. So this student will have the privilege of having a spotlight to himself. Uh, at this time, I'd like to call up Mr. William T. McDonough to receive his certificate. We were prepared for more recommendations, I mean, um, recognitions this evening. But now we will get to have our newly appointed personnel administrative appointments announced. So we look forward to meeting you all. Yes, ma'am. Dear Mr. Chairman, members of the board and Dr. Cashwell, staff and special guests, um, it is my pleasure to introduce the newest member of the school leadership team, Scott Thorpe. Mr. Th Mr. Thorpe earned his Bachelor of Science degree in elementary education from Shippensburg University in Shippensburg, Pennsylvania. And he earned his master's degree in administration and supervision from Salisbury University in Maryland. Mr. Thorpe taught at East Salisbury Elementary School and quickly transitioned into administration at the elementary level. He eventually found his way to Henrico and served um, as a principal here at Dumbarton Elementary, making great strides in mathematics and helping that school to um, gain full accreditation. And in July 2015, Mr. Thorpe left Henrico to become the Director of Accountability and Special Programs in Williamsburg James City County Public Schools. 
Two years later, he was promoted in that same division to assistant superintendent for school leadership. And we are glad to have Mr. Thorpe come back home to Henrico County. Welcome. Good evening, thank you very much. Uh, and I, it is my privilege to again serve in Rico County leaders and teachers and students and uh, families and communities. Uh, it's, it's great to be home. Thank you very much. And again, uh, I will work tirelessly with our schools to, to serve students. So again, thank you. And I do wanna introduce, my family is here, uh, Sam Thorpe. He is a rising seventh grader at Tuckahoe Middle School and Grace Thorpe, she, uh, was at Tuckahoe Middle School, and now she is a rising junior at Maggie Walker Governor School. So again, thank you very much for welcoming us, and uh, I'm glad to be back. Thank you. It is now my pleasure to introduce the new associate principal at Shady Grove Elementary, Ellen Guidry. has a rich background in instruction and school leadership. She has served as a special education teacher and reading interventionist in Henrico and Hanover, where she was recognized with a REB Award for Teaching Excellence and as Teacher of the Year. She has also served as an assessment specialist for the Virginia Department of Education in central office positions in elementary education and testing and accountability in Orange and Goochland counties, and as the Leadership Institute coordinator for the Virginia Early Childhood Foundation. Ms. Guidry earned her undergraduate degree at Miami University, her master's in special education at James Madison University, and her postmaster's certificate in educational leadership from Virginia Commonwealth University. She brings strength in strategic planning, school improvement, reading and specialized instruction, and communication to her new role, and we are excited to have her join the Shady Grove Cardinal team. Please, please join me again in congratulation, congratulating Ms. Guidry. Thank you very much. Thank you for making me sound so good. Um, <laughs> I am so excited to join the Shady Grove community and work with Dr. Austin. Um, through all of those different administrative roles I've had, my heart really belongs in a school building. I really want to collaborate with teachers and form relationships with students and their families. So I, I am just elated to um, be, be joining them in August. Um, I have a very supportive family. My husband is here, um, Rick. And we have four daughters. Uh, one just graduated from um, Virginia Tech. And I have one at Holman Middle School, and I have eight-year-old twins at Echo Lake. Um, the girls stayed home tonight because cousins just arrived a couple of hours ago, so they chose that over a school board meeting. Go figure. Um, when I told them about the news, um, one twin said, uh, good job, Mommy. And the other twin gave me a high five. And the middle schooler said, Mom, that's weird. So I'm looking forward to starting this weird position, and I look forward to serving Henrico County for many years. Thank you very much. Now it is my pleasure to introduce Jessica um, Winnegar, an associate principal at Lakeside Elementary. Jessica received her Bachelor of Science degree in Liberal Studies from Bridgewater College and her Master's in Education in Curriculum and Instruction and Postgraduate Certificate in Educational Leadership and Policy Studies from the University of Richmond. She has previously served as a classroom teacher at Ridge Elementary as well as a Summer Academy Coordinator. Most recently, she served as a resource teacher at Harvey Elementary where among all her other duties led the Lighthouse team for this Leader in Me school. One of Harvey's heroes is now joining the Lakeside Leopards as their new associate principal. Please congratulate Jessica Winnegar on her new appointment. 
Thank you so much. I'm very excited to continue my journey in Henrico. I just celebrated my 15th year in Henrico County, and I'm very excited to continue it at Lakeside Elementary. Um, I'm very excited to have um, my new principal, Debbie Samuel, here to support me, as well as my family, my mom, and my wonderful husband um, have been super supportive, and um, my kids also chose to stay home as well. If This was too boring for them, so. <laughs> um, but I'm very excited to uh, continue on, and looking forward to a great year. Congratulations. And now to introduce the newest member of the Glenlee Elementary Leadership Team, we have Ms. Tamika Kaysen. <laughs> Tamika will be an Associate Principal at Glenlee. She graduated from Virginia Union University with a Bachelor of Science degree in Interdisciplinary Studies and a concentration in Mathematics. Upon graduation, she taught at Glen Lee for 12 years, teaching every grade but kindergarten. She went on to earn her master's degree in administration and supervision from the University of Phoenix. And shortly after completing this degree, she transitioned to Pocahontas Middle School as the coordinator of assessment and remediation. She has been in this role at the middle school level as a CAR for the past four years and has administrative experience from being an administrative aide for the last three years. Her experience at the middle school level will surely be an asset as she moves back to the elementary level. Welcome back, Ms. Kaysen. Dr. Cashwell, members of the board, thank you so much for this opportunity. I am so excited to be going back to Glen Lee to be a lion again. Um, thank you, Ms. Tamika Campbell, for giving me this opportunity as well. Um, with me, I have my former associate principal, Mr. Matt Reinstein. I have one of my biggest supporters, my mother, and I have my significant significant other, Dawn. I also have two close friends who've been very good supporters, Ms. Natalie Randolph and Ms. Nicole Perry. So again, thank you for this opportunity. Good evening, Mr. Chair, members of the board, Dr. Cashwell, I'm pleased to introduce tonight uh, Dana Whitney as the Director of School Nutrition Services. Dana is a former sales and marketing professional who decided to change careers and put her degrees to good use. Dana earned a BS in biology from Virginia Tech and an MS in exercise science and nutrition from George Washington University. She completed her dietetic coursework through the University of Northern Colorado. Dana is a graduate of the VCU Health Dietetic Internship and held multiple roles, including Director of School Nutrition for Hanover County Public Schools. In her spare time, she enjoys cooking, entertaining, photography and spending time with the two children, husband and dog. Welcome, Dana. Hello. School nutrition has been a passion of mine for many, many years, and I've had a rewarding career at Hanover, but I'm excited to extend that at Henrico and getting to know all of you. My kids are goggles deep in swim practice right now, and you can thank me later for not bringing my son to this meeting. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Chairman, members of the board, Dr. Cashwell, ladies and gentlemen, with the retirement of Dr. McQueen Williams, Central Office bid farewell to a queen. However, tonight's appointment, Central Office welcomes another queen, Ms. Queen Bailey. <laughs> Ms. Bailey joins the Student Support and Disciplinary Review Office in her new role as Senior Coordinator of Student Conduct. Mrs. Bailey comes, from, comes to central office from Douglas Freeman High School where she effectively served as assistant principal for four years. Before Douglas Freeman, Mrs. Bailey wore a number of different hats, administrative aide and athletic director at John Rolfe Middle School, associate athletic director and director of compliance at Virginia Union University, her alma mater, where she was also the volleyball and basketball coach. Mrs. Bailey is an exceptional educator with proven skills in supporting students, but holding them accountable when they make poor decisions. She takes the time to address unwanted behavior and at the same time teaches the students the best way to handle the situation should it occur. She strongly is committed to preparing our students to be life ready in the 21st century. 
Per Mrs. Bailey, I believe it all starts with providing a well-rounded education for our students to help inspire and empower them to become contributing citizens. Mrs. Bailey's work ethic, her ability to create meaningful, and rela meaningful relationships, and her interpersonal skills makes her for a seamless transition from Douglas Freeman to the Student Support and Disciplinary Review Office. Ladies and gentlemen, I present to you Central Office's newest queen, Ms. Queen Bailey. Thank you, um, school board, Dr. Cashwell, Dr. Tigan, Dr. Noel, thank you so much for um, appointing me to this position. I'm very excited about joining the team because I've been very intrigued with that office for a couple of years now. So I'm excited about joining your team to continue the work that we do with our students across the entire county. Um, I have my support system here with me this evening, my husband, Michael Bailey, our children, Queen Jordan, who is a rising junior at New Kent High School, Devin, who is a rising sixth grader at New Kent Middle School. I have two of my brothers, Victory and Big Al, who are Henrico County products. Um, my cousin Tracy and my mother, of course, Queen Jemisa. So the queen runs through the family. Um, so I appreciate them. I am not who I am without them. And of course, um, my father's not here with us, but he is here with us in spirit in my heart forever. So he is my number one supporter. So thank you so much. I appreciate it. And I'm excited about doing the work that we all do every day. Mr. Chairman, members of the board, Dr. Cashwell, colleagues, and special guests. It is my pleasure to introduce the newest member of the Teaching, Learning, Innovation team, Ms. Chandra Floyd, who will be serving as the role of gifted specialist. <laughs> Ms. Floyd currently serves as a graduate research assistant and intern at the Center for Gifted Education at the College of William & Mary. Ms. Floyd's focus at the college is the K-12 University Partnership Grant, a matter of equity advancing high potential in Detroit public schools through professional learning on the integrated curriculum model, identifying gifted students from diverse populations and culturally responsive teaching. Prior to her work at William & Mary, Ms. Floyd served as a gifted resource teacher and English teacher in Norfolk County Public Schools. Mrs. Floyd also serves as a middle school English arts teacher in New, Han New Hanover County, Wilmington, North Carolina. Ms. Floyd holds a Bachelor of Science degree from East Carolina, a master's degree from Graceland University, a gifted endorsement and EDS from Cambridge College, and is currently a PhD candidate from the William College of William and Mary. Ms. Floyd's interests include gifted education policy issues, including racial diversity and gifted programs, educational policy, teacher recruitment and retention, equity in racial outcomes and experiences, P PK through, through 20 education initiatives, positive psychology and education with a focus on racially marginalized populations, creativity and education. We'd like to welcome aboard Mrs. Floyd. Thank you. I am so honored to be here. Um, one of the things that I put on my interest letter when I was applying for this position is that this is the dream position. So I'm really excited to be pursuing my dream here, um, working with the families and the young children and everyone here uh, to further the cause of gifted education and making sure that there is equity and opportunity for all of our students. Thank you all for having me. I'm humbled to be here. Good evening, Mr. Chairman, Dr. Cashwell, members of the board, colleagues, and guests. It is my pleasure to introduce Mrs. Melody Phipps as the new principal of Cuyacuson Middle School. <laughs> Ms. Phipps received her Bachelor's of Science in Liberal Studies from Longwood University with endorsements in Science and History, a Master's degree from the University of Richmond in Educational Leadership and Policy Studies. Mrs. Phipps started her educational career as a seventh grade science teacher at Tuckahoe Middle School. Her leadership experience includes summer school academy coordinator, an assistant principal at Glen Allen High School, and most recently, the associate principal of J.R. Tucker High School. Mrs. Phillips, 
Phillips has experience supporting students from diverse backgrounds, always taking into consideration their academic, social, and emotional needs. Her collaborative approach and focus on building capacity in teachers have, has resulted in increased student achievement in math at Tucker High School. In addition, she has facilitated numerous professional learning sessions for teachers and administrators within the county. Please join me in congratulating Mrs. Melanie Phillips as the new principal of Cuyahocasin Middle School. Welcome back to middle school. Thank you so much. Members of the school board, Dr. Cashwell, Dr. Grant, thank you for this opportunity. I am more than honored and humbled to be, become a Griffin, um, and I am thrilled to immerse myself in the Cuyahocasin community. And here with me today, and I would not be here without them, is my support team. I have my husband, Derek, my daughter, Charlotte, who's a rising kindergartner at Mayberry Elementary, my other daughter, Natalie, who's a rising second grader at Mayberry Elementary, my wonderful mother, and I also have my eighth grade math teacher, and also the very first principal who hired me as a teacher, Dr. Fellows. And then, of course, Mr. Raymond, my current principal. Couldn't have done this without him. He provided me many, many opportunities to lead at Tucker, and I'm very thankful for that. Ms. Foster, who is our principal secretary, but actually she's a lot more to me than just that. Mr. Reese, our math department chair, and then my two very best friends, Ms. Bonner and Ms. Foster. I just said Ms. Foster. <laughs> Sorry. And Sally Foster. Thank you all so much for this opportunity. And again, I'm so excited to get started. Good evening, Mr. Chairman, members of the board, and Dr. Cashwell. It is my pleasure to introduce the Title I Specialist, Dr. Cassandra Willis. That was very dangerous handing a microphone to that man. <laughs> Dr. Willis recently earned her doctorate in philosophy, special education, and disability policy from Virginia Commonwealth University. She also holds a master's in dis interdisciplinary studies, mathematics, and science leadership, along with a post-master's certificate in educational leadership from VCU. The experiences that have prepared her to serve in Henrico are the ones where she worked focused on instruction and policy to impact student achievement, serving as the communication specialist for the Virginia Department of Social Services, serving as an assistant principal, educational specialist, and Title I math teacher in Henrico County Public Schools and Richmond Public Schools. While pursuing her doctorate, Dr. Willis contributed as an intern in various capacities to include, but not limited to, the Commonwealth of Educational Policy Institute at Douglas Wilder School of Government and Public Affairs, and supporting the Secretary of Education on policy making activities. It is my pleasure with excitement to welcome Dr. Willis and her experiences, passion, and energy to our phenomenal federal programs team. Welcome Dr. Willis. Good evening, Dr. Cashwell, members of the board. I want to thank you for this incredible opportunity. It's good to be back. I don't think anybody's happier to have me on a payroll than my husband. <laughs> I'm excited to partner with Tina Alsep on extending equitable opportunities for our students who certainly have the intelligence but don't always have the resources and the knowledge to pursue their passions. Tonight I have with me my husband, Laird Willis, in case, you know, for some of you who don't. <laughs> And I have my daughter, Layla, who's a rising seventh grader at Hungry Creek Middle School. As everyone said, she's not too excited about being here tonight, but it is what it is. And we have Caleb, who has finished up his career at Greenwood and is actually going to the zoned gifted program at Trevet. So we are happy to be here and thank you all. Rough night for school board meetings. And it was wonderful to meet all of our newly appointed administrators this evening and have a chance to 
formally introduce you to not only the board, but to all of our other guests here. Our next item, without further ado, is our Henrico highlights. And of course, you know, these highlights capture the activities of the month. And so with, uh, as you know, uh, Mr. Chairman and members of the board, um, graduations have been um, our events to celebrate recently. So um, if you would please direct your attention to the screen and we'll experience a collection of memorable moments from our principals and graduating seniors. Thank you. Um, Dr. Cooper, would you read the mission statement for us, please? Yes, sir. I'd be more than happy to. Thank you. In Rico County Public Schools, an innovative leader in educational excellence will actively engage our students in diverse educational, social, and civic learning experiences that inspire and empower them to become contributing citizens. Thank you very much. The next item on the agenda is the public forum. This is a time where citizens are invited to address the school board on any matter of concern about the school division. Some citizens may have signed up in advance with the school, clerk, school board clerk. We will follow that list first and then allow anyone else who wishes to speak to come to the podium to do so after we've completed the list. We ask that each speaker come to the microphone and clearly state his or her name their neighborhood, and any school affiliation. Once you've finished speaking, we ask that you write your name and contact information on a sign-in form that's located on the table directly behind the microphone. And check the box if you wish to be contacted by a staff member regarding your concerns. To assist you in tracking your time, there's a timekeeping system on the podium. Speakers will have four minute, a four-minute time limit. The light will be green as you begin your remarks. The yellow light means you have one minute remaining. And we ask that you promptly stop when the light turns red in respect to other speakers. The school board is here tonight to hear from you, the community. Speakers will speak directly to the board. We will not be responding to speakers. And we appreciate your attendance here tonight in providing your input and the opportunity for a staff member to follow up. We do have one speaker signed up, Dr. McLeod. Or Dr. Mac, as we like to refer to you as. <laughs> Good evening. Good evening. It's one of these mics. This one. Good evening. Uh, most of you who know me uh, know that uh, I'm very shy when it comes <laughs> to speaking in a public forum. So bear with me, if you will. 
Uh, first of all, I have two things I'd like to do. One is to thank the board uh, for an outstanding job again this year in leading the school district. I want to appreciate your, your hard work and your dedication. And I try to give kudos to people when you work hard <laughs> and you've been successful. Everybody loves a winner, right? That's right. So you won this year. What I'd like to do now, however, that was the easy part. Mm -hmm. Let me get to the rough part. Uh, the other day I was reading the newspaper. You know, uh, retirees have too much time on their hands. Uh, but I was reading the newspaper and I saw an article that, that got my attention. Normally I just kind of look at these things and just move on. But this one stopped me in my tracks. Uh, what it was was an article in the Times Dispatch about uh, the several schools, uh, I think there are about 20 of them in this school division, that have gained the uh, moniker of being VIP schools. I think that stands for Virginia uh, Index of Performance at the excellent or distinguished achievement level. And it dawned on me as I read the list, I was impressed with the large number of schools that Henrico has, showing again the outstanding leadership of the school division. But then as I start to look at where the schools were located, it bothered me, I must tell you. I was very, very disappointed to see that of 20 schools at the elementary, middle, and high school level, there were none on this side of the highway, none on this side of the interstate. It was my understanding that 95 was built to be a highway, not a wall. And so although I live in one of the communities that fed into a number of the schools uh, that were on that prestigious list, I was concerned that there were no schools represented from the other side of 95. And so I guess I bring that to your attention and wrap your knuckles lightly and encourage you to continue to do what you're doing and raising the level of achievement among all of our kids in this county. So it's important that our model the right to, maybe I don't have it quite down yet, but the, the, the opportunity to achieve the right to succeed uh, is more than a moniker, is more than a motto, it's a reality for all of our kids. None of our kids, every one of our kids should wake up in the morning and go to a VIP school. And so I'm pushing for you to, to continue to do what you've been doing, but to work even to redouble your efforts to ensure that all of the kids have an opportunity to, to uh, attend these uh, VIP schools. As I looked at the list, neither one of my kids graduated from a VIP school, but they still did quite well. I guess it reinforces the notion that I have, uh, which is that the homes kids come from is far more important than the schools they go to. But schools do matter, and so with that, I encourage you to use this opportunity in redistricting to ensure that all of our youngsters have an opportunity to be successful and to be great. Thank you for listening, and I wish you all a great summer. Thank you, Dr. Mack. Thank you very much. Uh, that, that was our only uh, person who signed up. Is there anyone else who wishes to speak at this time? Please come forward. So please state your name and any school that you're affiliated with. Thank you for coming. Uh, thank you. Well, first of all, thank you for having me. Uh, my name is Meredith Brown. I am an actual parent of two children that are in attendance at Arthur Ashe Elementary um, School right up here in East End. Um, and I wanted to just first say thank you for you know allowing me to share, allowing us to have this platform. Um, I don't know if how many parents along with me did not understand or know that this is available to us. So you know again, thank you for at least having that available. Uh, the reason that I'm coming and I don't have anything prepared, um, I'm just going off my heart. Um, I recently uh, my kids are just finishing. I have a four and a seven year old. Um, they. Um, have been doing very well uh, with Arthur Ashton um, School. And I'm coming because I, in, in the very recent months, had to make an emergency move out of a place that was molded. Um, and so we had to make a move for the health of my children. I am a registered nurse, and so I do not believe in putting my kids' health at any type of risk as much as I can possibly. Um, but 
I made a move and then I was, um, I guess when I went to go apply for my kids to go back to school, I was at the moment, I didn't even know that my kids were gonna be zoned into another school. Um, and then so I asked for a special request for my children to stay at Arthur Elementary because I like the principles that Dr. Liscom has put in place. That Leaders in Me program is very, very effective. I didn't really understand the dynamics of it. Um, I do a lot of personal development, reading, and I read to my children. I'm very involved in their education and just in their personal development. But what stood out to me was that um, my children have embraced those leadership skills. I'm not sure how many of you have actually read The Leader in Me. It's a very famous author, Mr. Stephen Covey. He actually teaches, um, other, he has other books that um, you know um, go to adults. But what I like is that not only are my kids going to school with a curriculum, but they're also applying these principles from a leader in me. And I believe that everywhere we go, we should have principles that we you know, abide by in our own lives that help us in our own, you know, in our own lives. So what I wanted to, you know, just, um, you know, try to understand is I understand the overcrowding um, issue when it comes to zoning schools. But like, you know, the end of it, the gentleman said about the VIPs is something I'm learning. I'm not even, I don't really understand all of it is about redistricting, you know, where kids are supposed to go. It almost made me feel like my kids were cattle. Um, because there's a line being drawn on a map that determines where our kids go, not by the principles and not by the things that are being taught to them in school, but by a map. And so, you know, I was wondering if you guys, you know, would ever consider, um, you know, looking into that leader in me, not just in one school, but in many of the other schools that possibly could help the Easton. Um, because it's a very effective program. You know, our children, not only do they learn the principles, they apply it not on, you know, to their education, but they apply it in their lives. Um, whether it's through discipline or, you know, their good efforts, they're being rewarded all the way around. And they're, you know, if they have to be disciplined, they now have to present examples of how they can be better using those leadership skills. So, you know, it would be great if maybe parents that want to have their children in a particular school you know, to have a special request based on what, you know, these um, principles and things are being put in place, not just be put in a school just because it's a zone. So hopefully I didn't go all over the place, but <laughs> that was my concern, and I would definitely love somebody just to reach out and, you know, help me pretty much understand what's about to happen. Okay. Thank, thank you so much, uh, Ms. Brown. And uh, you did provide your information, so we'll certainly, if you'll, there's a place to sign up and, uh, maybe somebody will share with you some of the information about the upcoming redistricting committee, uh, which would be a great opportunity uh, for for you or maybe somebody you know to participate. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you for sharing. Is there anyone else that would like to speak tonight? Please come forward. Mr. Chair, members of the board, Madam Superintendent, staff and guests, uh, my purpose for coming today, uh, first I'd like to say congratulations. I think the individuals that uh, were recognized today as new members of the team, I think you've done an excellent job in helping to move our school district forward. So kudos to you on that. Uh, my second purpose for coming today was just to acknowledge how ironic it is that government has almost legislated God out of schools, but when schools needed God, he stepped in. I'm a proud parent of a student that graduated from Hermitage High School. And it was not lost on me that when the weather sort of intruded on graduation, our school district had to rally. And so if I could find a person who reached out to St. Paul Baptist Church, I probably would squeeze them tight enough to get an assault charge. Um, but I also want to thank St. Paul for being available and stepping in. Um, the graduation was awesome. And I'm talking about the uh, Tech Center graduation. Um, my, my recommendation, I, I believe that Dennis Bigmeyer would have done an awesome job in making our students and parents feel welcomed and, and excited about the opportunity. But it wouldn't hurt my feelings if St. Paul became plan A instead of plan B going forward. My only recommendation 
is that you talk to whoever it is that uh, works with their traffic disbursement initiative when they leave church, because that, that, that proved to be quite the challenge. So I just wanted to say thank you uh, for the time and effort that you put in. Uh, it was a great graduation. Uh, Mac and his team did an awesome job. Um, we do a lot of talking about the things that need to get done here. I, I'm, I'm really proud of Dr. Mack. I think he did an excellent uh, uh, way of expressing some of the things that you probably already know have to be addressed. And I support much of what he said, if not all. And I believe many of you do as well. And I think we're working toward that end. I get to say that because I'm a part of uh, the initiative to try to address those issues. So again, thank you. Um, I wanted to come by and see what was going on before the summer actually gets underway because I know um, uh, we've lost a lot of great people. Um, and I expect that um, in keeping in what I believe is the great tradition of the school district, we, we want to replace greatness with greatness. So thank you for letting me have the time to come talk and enjoy your summers if I don't see you before then. Thank you for all you do for us. Thank you. Yep. Enjoy your summer. Are there any others that would like to speak? Very good. Well, thank you to each of you who spoke tonight, and uh, we'll make sure to follow up with, with you and uh, anyone else. So thank you, Madam Superintendent. Oh, I beg your pardon. We sure do. So the next item on the agenda is the approval of the minutes. Board members, we've had an opportunity to review those minutes. Is there a motion to adopt the minutes as presented? So moved. Moved by Mrs. Cock. Is there a second? Second. Second by Mrs. Ogburn. All those in favor of adoption of the minutes indicate by saying aye. Aye. Any opposed ayes have it. The minutes are adopted now. All right. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. For the first item is the recommendation that the school board approve adding 11 full-time equivalent positions to the 2019-2020 complement. Seven positions support daily planning for elementary teachers by adding full-time instructional positions, and four positions are to implement a year-long resident teacher program in collaboration with a university partner at Fair Oaks Elementary School. Thank you, members of the board. You've heard the superintendent's recommendation. Uh, is there a motion to adopt her recommendation for the um, adding 11 full-time equivalent positions? So moved. Moved by Reverend Cooper. Is there a second? Second. Seconded by Mr. Pike. All those in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? The ayes have it. The motion carries. Thank you. Next is the recommendation that the school board accept the Capital One Coders Grant Award of $10,000 each to Rolf and Echo Elko, rather, middle schools for a total of $20,000. Members of the board, you've heard the superintendent's recommendation. Is there a motion to adopt the recommendation and accept the grants? So moved. Moved by Mrs. Ogburn. Is there a second? Second. Second by Reverend Cooper. All those in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 Any opposed, ayes have it. The grants are accepted. Thank you. Next is the recommendation that the school board accept the $6,550 Partners in the Arts Grant Award to Carver Elementary School and the $9,300 PIA or Partners in the Arts Grant Award to Holman Middle School for a total of $15,850. Members of the board, you've heard the superintendent's recommendation regarding the uh, Partners in the Arts Grant. Is there a motion to adopt the recommendation? So moved. Moved by Mrs. Ogburn. Is there a second? Second. Second by Mr. Pike. All those in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 Any opposed, ayes have it. The grant's accepted. And finally, we're requesting your approval for the Touring Assistance Grant Award of $7,475 to the Henrico County Public Schools Arts Education Program. Members of the board, you've heard the superintendent's recommendation regarding the Arts to Touring Assistance Grant Award. Is there a motion to adopt the recommendation? So moved. Moved by Mrs. Cock. Is there a second? Second. Seconded by Reverend Cooper. All those in favor indicate by saying aye. Aye. Any opposed, ayes have it. The grant is accepted. Thank you. Next, under instructional support, I have two items. The first is the recommendation that the school board approve the proposed revisions to the 2019-2020 Code of Student Conduct that were shared with the board at a prior meeting. And of course, we've reviewed those uh, changes to the code of conduct and had an opportunity to discuss them and have our answers, our questions answered. Is there a motion to adopt the code of conduct? And it was moved by Reverend Cooper. Is there a second? Second. Second, second by Ms. Cock. All those in favor indicate by saying aye. Aye. 
Any opposed? Ayes have it. The code of conduct's adopted, Reverend Cooper. <laughs> Thank you. All right. Next is the recommendation that the school board accept the state and federal grant funding in the amount of $15,316,588 and a detailed plan related to that funding was shared at a prior meeting. Very good. Members of the board, is there a motion to adopt the uh, recommendation for state and federal grant funding? So moved. Moved by Mr. Pike. Is there a second? Moved by, uh, seconded by Mrs. Ogmer. All those in favor indicate by saying aye. aye. Any opposed, ayes have it. The motion carries. All right, next I have a number of policy revisions for which we'll be asking your approval. The first one is the recommendation that the school board approve proposed revisions to policy P4-08-008 annual leave. Members of the board have had an opportunity to uh, address these and answer any questions that and have the, our Questions answered. Is there a motion to adopt revision to policy P4 08 008 annual leave? So moved. Moved by Mrs. Ogmer. Is there a second? Second. Seconded by Mrs. Cock. All those in favor indicate by saying aye. Aye. Any opposed, ayes have it. The motion carries. Thank you. Next, we're asking for your approval of pro proposed revisions to policy P6 11 003 other sale of food items. Members of the board, you've heard the superintendent's recommendation. Is there a motion to adopt the revision to policy P6-11-003? So moved, Ms. Chairman. Moved by Reverend Cooper. Is there a second? Second. Seconded by Mr. Pike. All those in favor indicate by saying aye. Aye. Ayes have it. The motion carries. Thank you. Next, I'm seeking your approval for a new policy, policy P7-04-021, world language credits for students demonstrating language proficiency. Thank you, members of the board. Is there a motion to adopt the proposed new policy P7-04-021? So moved. Moved by Mrs. Cock. Is there a second? Second. Second by Reverend Cooper. All those in favor indicate by saying aye. Aye. Any opposed, ayes have it. The policy is adopted. Thank you. Next is the request for approval for proposed revisions to policy P7-09-004 graduation requirements. Members of the board, is there a motion to adopt revision to policy P7-09-004? So moved. Moved by Mr. Pike. Is there a second? Second. Second by Mrs. Ogburn. and all those in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 Any opposed, ayes have it. The uh, policy is revised. And finally, under policies, is the, um, your, we are seeking your approval for proposed revisions to policy P9-20-007, food storage areas. Thank you, members of the board. You've heard the superintendent's recommendation regarding revisions to policy P9-20-007. <laughs> so moved. Second. It's been moved and seconded by Reverend Cooper and Mrs. Cock. All those in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Policy P9-20-007 passes. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Next, under operations, we have a number of items coming forward, which we moved from the work session to first pri provide a review, and then for which we'll be seeking your approval. And so um, Susan Moore is here. Should you have any questions about each individual item, we'll provide an opportunity for questions and then seek your approval. Thank you very much. Um, the first item is related to the award of the annual term contract for concrete and asphalt rehabilitation to Finley Asphalt and Ceiling Incorporated. Should you have any questions? Members of the board, are there any questions regarding this annual contract? Susan, can you go down on every line item on no. this? <laughs> I would need a cheat sheet. <laughs> yeah, you, you can stay after school and get that, Reverend Cooper. There being no questions, is there a motion to adopt the uh, annual term contract for concrete and asphalt rehabilitation as described by the my, superintendent? My pleasure to make that motion, Mr. Thank Chairman. you. Thank you, Reverend Cooper. Is there a second? Second. Second by Mrs. Cock. All those in favor indicate by saying aye. Aye. Any opposed? The term contract is adopted. The next item is related to our request for approval for a construction contract to Brooks and Company General Contractors Incorporated in the amount of $101,700, which includes additive alternate one for kitchen improvements at the, at the Academy at Virginia Randolph. Are there any questions, members of the board? Is there a motion to adopt the recommendation of the superintendent regarding the award of the construction contract for kitchen improvements at the Academy of Virginia Randolph. So moved. It's been moved by Reverend Coover. Is there a second? 
Second. Second by Mr. Pike. All those in favor indicate by saying aye. Aye. Any opposed? The contract is so awarded. <clears throat> Thank you. Next is our request for the approval of the proposals by Slurry Pavers Incorporated for pavement improvements in the amount of $196,362.62 for Gayton Elementary School, $150,855.63 for Lakeside Elementary School, $199,913.06 for Montrose Elementary School, $180,936.88 for Shady Grove Elementary School, $199,899.35 for Short Pump Middle School, and $190,990.92 for Trevet Elementary School. Thank you. Members of the board, are there any questions? Yes. One quick question. Yes. Um, Ms. Moore, quick. at Shady Grove, where it doesn't really say in our paperwork what part um, of Shady Grove, because it, I know at Short Pump Middle it's a bus loop, but um, can you describe where at Shady Grove? I, I'll need to verify for you, but I believe it's part of the main parking lot. Main but parking. I will verify that for you and let you know. Okay, that'd be great. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? And th these are Mills tax projects, correct? Sir. Okay, they thank are. you very much. Are there are there any uh, are there any further questions? Is there a motion to adopt the proposal for pavement improvements at the schools as outlined by the superintendent? So moved been moved by Mrs. Cock. Is there a second? Second. Second by Mrs. Ogburn. All those in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Ayes have it. The payment will be improved. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. And finally is our request for um, approval for the change order proposal in the amount of $98,804.56 to the existing purchase order with Colony Construction Incorporated for pavement improvements at Carver Elementary School. Thank you. Members of the board, are there any questions? Yes. Yes. Please ask your question, Mr. Pike. Thank you, sir. Um, can you give us a little bit more clarity why? <laughs> as to why this change order originated? Yes, sir. The, the project started um, with a previous meals tax project, um, and we had additional monies left over. We had a savings in the first meals tax project. So this change order is just utilizing the existing purchase order we have in place um, to complete the upper blacktop PE area at okay. Carver. So we just piggybacked onto a, a purchase order we already had in place. Okay. Right. Very good, good question, good. good answer. So any other questions, comments, concerns? Is there a motion to adopt the superintendent's recommendation for approval of the construction change order for pavement improvement at Carver so Elementary School? So moved. moved. Moved by Mr. Pike, is there a second? <laughs> second. Second by Mrs. Cock, all those in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 Any opposed, ayes have it, the approval is granted. All right, thank you. Next, the following items are consent items, and so they can be taken in a block, and we're requesting your approval of the following. The acceptance of the monthly financial statement and budgetary status report for the month ending May 31, 2019. Acceptance of the monthly financial statement for school nutrition services operation for the month ending May 31, 2019. Approval of pupil transportation employee releases. Approval of personnel items. Appointment of new members to the 2019-2020 Equity and Diversity Advisory Committee. Adoption of resolution authorizing the superintendent to accept or reject resignations after June 15th. Adoption of resolution permitting the superintendent to reassign teachers, assistant principals, and principals within the school division for the 2019-2020 school year. Adoption of a resolution to appoint fiscal agent and deputy fiscal agent for the 2019-2020 school year. Thank you, members of the board. Uh, you've heard the recommendation of the superintendent for these items, these consent items. Is there a motion to adopt the consent items as presented? So moved. Moved by Mrs. Cock. Is there a second? Second. Second by Reverend Cooper. All, Cooper, all those in favor indicate by saying aye. Aye. Any opposed, ayes have it. The consent items are adopted. Thank you, Mr. Chairman and members of the board. That concludes items from the superintendent. Thank you. Members of the board, are there any uh, unfinished business items to be brought forward, any new business items? If there are not any, then the last item is to announce our next meeting, which will not occur until August the 8th, at which will be at 2 o'clock for the work session. And that time is subject to change. There not being any further business. Everyone is uh, directed to enjoy your summer, and the meeting is adjourned.